All right, quick video for fathers, specifically, or for mentors. Um, had a friend call me last night, and he was concerned, or at least he was disconcerted, we'll say, because his son um, knew something, actually better than he did, as he was trying to... Uh, impart a lesson, let's say a life lesson to his son. His son actually, he was quoting, uh, I'll tell you the specifics, he was quoting spe a specific scripture and a specific story uh, in the Bible that uh, he had been learning um, as part of a sermon. And he was trying to impart this lesson and this story to his son. And his son actually knew the Bible story better than him and actually uh, could quote the scripture. And so my friend called me asking me, has this ever happened to me? Where he felt like he was not as adept at something as his son. And where he also felt like he wasn't walking uh, the walk that he talked or practicing what he preached. Uh, and so <clears throat> he was just concerned that he, his young son, honestly, he's pretty young. Well, he was concerned that his young son was already like elevating himself above above him in the area of spiritual discipline and of uh, understanding and of biblical knowledge and that type of thing in this case. And he asked me if this had happened to me, what my thoughts were on it, because he said that he felt like he was really not in tune with or in alignment with who he wants to be as a father when it comes to leading his family spiritually. <clears throat> and that's what I want to talk about today. Uh, because I've been there too. And my advice to him was, first off, I said, you know, I know for a fact uh, you guys are raising him right. And so, the, you know, you have already given him his own copies of uh, the scriptures and he's read through those and he's been exposed to uh, teachings because you guys are faithful in uh, taking him to church, to Sunday school, and he, so he's learning there, and uh, he, he's also a big bookworm, so he just really has been absorbing like a sponge what he's been reading and learning, and he has the time to devote to that, unlike you, because you're providing, and um, you just don't have the, the time, maybe, uh, but <clears throat> at the same time, I said, uh, you don't want to be, I said, our kids are not dumb, right? Kids are not dumb. We were all children once. We weren't dumb. We weren't stupid. We could see when what mom or dad said they believed, we could see whether or not they actually believed it by whether or not they practiced it, by whether or not they actually were living out what they claimed their beliefs were. And I said, our kids will find out if we're pretenders, right? They'll find out if we're posers eventually. And we embody uh, what, <clears throat> let, me, let me put it this way. We want to embody what we say we believe. That's the only way that actually shows that we believe it. Otherwise, we're probably fooling ourselves and we can't fool our kids for long. We may be able to fool ourselves for a while. But we cannot fool our kids for long. If it's not important to you, whatever the case may be, this may be um, courage, this may be leadership, this may be, um, uh, in this case, it was it was God. It was belief in God and in um, His power in our life. It could be uh, a good, strong marriage. It could be. Um, working hard, work ethics, right? It could be purity. I don't know what the case is for you, but all I know is eventually your kids will see what you're embodying, what's important to you, what your true beliefs are, whether you're deceiving yourself or not, you're not going to deceive them. And they will know whether or not dad finds this important. Dad is practicing what he's preaching. Dad is leading from the front, right? He's not just... Because they're going to want to imitate you and they're going to want to imitate me. 
or, or kids are, or, or mentees, if you're mentoring someone. So as they say, you wouldn't go to a mentor and say, uh, you wouldn't go to a mentor and say, hey, I'm having these marriage problems. If the mentor has been divorced three times and is currently um, not married, right? Because they don't have the wisdom. They don't have the, <clears throat> the, the practices in place, the disciplines in place uh, in that aspect of their lives, in that facet. For you to gain and garner wisdom from them. And so as fathers, we need to do the best we can to embody what we are trying to teach our children. Because that's going to be the best lesson. I've heard it said something to the effect that as fathers, we need to... Um, something to the effect of basically teach with our lives and then occasionally use words. Occasionally use words, but mostly they're going to see us. They're going to emulate us they're going to try to imitate us uh and so so yeah it is humbling when our children may know more about something than what we claim we we uh than what we claim right that we know uh, in that area and it's a good reminder and a good wake-up call for us when that happens that hey we are abdicating our responsibilities in some way and so it's Good to get right back on. It doesn't mean that you panic. It doesn't mean that you feel sorry for yourself or anything like that. It's just when we come to that realization that we need to do something about it. There needs to be a plan of action, right? And it's never too late. I mean, it's so easy in a household as a father to just kind of get into habits, get into routines, and not want to get out of those routines because then it's that, that path of least resistance that we like to take. But our, our wives and our children, they need us to step up. And they need us to inspire them and lead from the front. We, I said this in a previous video, we are the thermostat for the home. We set the temperature. We set the expectations. And then they follow along. They have to uh, live in the climate that we create. And as fathers, it's our, our duty to set the bar high, set the standards high. That way, we're calling them up, calling our children up to something grander and better than uh, <clears throat> maybe what we had, and grander and better than what they currently are and who they are and what they want. We want them. We want to paint that picture of of a person, of a man, either for boys that they want to be or for girls that they want to be with. And so we need to set that standard in all areas of life. And it's never too late. It's never too late to uh, start working on yourself. When you start seeing weaknesses, that's, that's part of life. It's, we need to improve. We need to grow. We need to uh, shore up uh, our weak points. And it's in these cases that we see what those are. Okay. Sometimes it's hard for us to see. Sometimes we know and we don't do anything about it and we're uh, we procrastinate or we're complacent, but <clears throat> it's we we're running out. We don't want to squander time. We don't have a lot of time with our kids um, to to embody and model who we want them to be. That's what's so great about having kids, though, is they can really be a mirror to show you what what you need to grow in, and um, and so yeah, they're they're quite a blessing, but. I want to make this one short and sweet. I uh, just want to encourage you to not let uh, those moments slide past you and, and just like, you know, put your hands up in the air and say, well, I can't really help them in that area. No. Take an interest in your children. Take an interest in uh, raising uh, the children that you that you want them to be. And that means embodying what you want them to be. Okay? And this is for me more than it is for you. <laughs> uh, I do not have it all together. I have three children. And uh, every day I'm humbled in some way by the comments they make. For instance, I'll give you an example of one of my shortcomings is my kids have told me in the past that you are always on your phone. That. You know, I could deny it all I want. Oh, I'm not on my phone a lot. I, or, you know, I have 
these are, I have busy, I'm busy. I have things that I have to do or certain responsibilities when I know for a fact that that's rare. Most of the time I'm on my phone just because it's habit, just because, um, you know, I, it's just, it's what I do throughout uh, the day each day, honestly. And whenever I'm with them and I'm supposed to be spending quality time with them and I'm on my phone, what am I telling them? I'm telling them that what is on this phone, what is on this device right now is more important than what you are doing. And I've even heard my kids say, hey, dad, look at me, dad, watch this. And it's them trying to redirect my attention to them because they want that, that validation and that affirmation that they are loved, that they're important, and that they matter more than what is on this dumb device. And so um, that's an area that I'm still working in, working with. Sometimes I'll leave my phone down in my office. Uh, okay, so other times I have to uh, turn it off or just like be very deliberate in keeping it in my pocket until everyone's asleep. That way I spend quality time with my kids and uh, they know how much they mean to me and with my wife as well. She knows how much she means to me as she's more important than uh, whatever is in social media land or on the news or in my email box or in my text messages. Uh, so I don't know, guys, hopefully there's some lesson in here for you, especially for, uh, fathers, but again, also for mentors. Um, we need to self-reflect, um, and find ways to grow and get better in that way. And let our kids see it or let our mentees see that, that we're getting better, right? So they, so they know, hey, my default mode here or my lack of discipline here or my bad habits in this area, they can change because I saw dad change or I saw my mentor change and, and for the better. And so I can do it too. Um, so it can, anything can be a life lesson, you know, failures, successes, anything in between life lessons. All right, guys, if you stuck with me to the end, thank you very much. I'm going to try coming out with content more and more. Uh, just things that I think can benefit. I don't know where the channel is going to go completely, but things probably that I think can benefit men specifically, because I feel like that's the area where I can speak most to, especially as a husband, a father, um, a friend, um, you know, um, an employee, uh, those types of things. So I'll, I'll do the best, do the best that I can to stay consistent. And I appreciate anyone that's able to like, subscribe, share, anything like that. And that's it, guys. Thanks.